Good evening everyone, this is Ryan Hoyme, aka Massage Nerd, and today we have a special guest for the third time, it's David Palmer. Um, David Palmer is considered the father of chair massage, and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be touring his new facility, and also he's going to be giving us a little bit of demo at the end, and you can also ask questions anytime during the broadcast then. Okay, David, hi. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Uh, front. It's a little noisy out here, so we're going to take you in pretty quickly. But this is the uh, storefront of uh, what's now called uh, Breakpoint Professional Massage. I don't know if you can uh, go up here and see. Can you see the Breakpoint sign? Oh, that is gorgeous. There you go. Okay, so this is in Crocker Galleria, which is the, uh, uh, in the financial district in downtown San Francisco. And I think we'll go in because it's a little bit noisy out here. It's also dark. It's also after hours. It's 7 o'clock out here on the West Coast. And uh, this is the waiting area. And so I'll just uh, sit here for a second and talk a little bit about, uh, talk with you about the uh, uh, evolution of, uh, of uh, this facility. This is the uh, TouchPro model. TouchPro is my organization. And we've created models for uh, training chair massage practitioners and also models for doing the business of uh, chair massage. Um, uh, so the uh, three major markets for chair massage, as you know, are the uh, workplace market, uh, the on-site market, the event market, and, uh, and then the retail market. And I worked in the, the first two uh, early in my career back in the 80s when I was developing uh, my work with uh, chair massage. And uh, we went down in the workplace to Apple Computer in 1984 and 85 and, and on from there. Um, uh, we did a lot of uh, work at conventions and other types of events, um, uh, but we've never done anything in the retail setting. And I was interested in making that happen. I was interested in, uh, in first of all, why more people weren't doing retail chair massage, because I'd always considered that to be kind of the largest market, um, uh, potential market for chair massage services. After all, I came uh, uh, into the massage industry in the 80s, in the mid 80s, there was another kind of retail service that had never been in freestanding locations before, and that was uh, nail salons. In the early 80s, up to the mid-80s, the only place you could get your fingernails done were in high-end hair salons. And then uh, with a wave of immigration from South Korea that happened in the mid-80s, um, uh, they used the South Koreans who had freestanding nail salons in their own country, used it as a uh, economic stepping stone um, up, the, uh, up the ladder of success in the United States. And, and pretty soon, by the end of the 80s, there was a nail salon in virtually every shopping mall and uh, business district um, street corner in, uh, in the United States. So that was kind of the model that I looked at in the 80s. And I thought, well, geez, if they could do that for fingernails, we should be able to do that for massage. And so I was, I've always been interested in that market, and I've watched other people um, uh, with varying success do uh, retail chair massage uh, situations. Uh, uh, probably the most best known and most successful one um, uh, was uh, Kerry Coué, uh, who did the uh, uh, massage bar at a number of airports around the country. Um, uh, and I was interested in uh, exploring it for myself and seeing what it took to create a successful chair retail chair massage model. So in the uh, uh, early uh, 2000s, I began working with the business partner, and uh, we created something that we called Zubio, which is actually this is this space is the result of uh, of that effort. Uh, Zubio was an attempt to create a brand name uh, chair massage service. It had some things in common with uh, Massage Envy, that model, uh, which was done for table massage. Uh, in that uh, one, of the, one of the ways that people could get a massage besides just walking in off the street was by becoming a member. Um, uh, now our memberships were month to month, not yearly, and there were a number of significant differences in our model from the, uh, from the uh, 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 model for the table massage services, but uh, that aspect was uh, involved there. Because we're creating a brand, uh, we had a lot of investors uh, for Zubio, uh, unfortunately, at the moment that we we're ready to open our second unit, second, third, fourth unit, um, when we had a whole bunch of new investors lined up, 
that time was in uh, May of 2008, and uh, at that that was the moment that the oil crisis hit on top of the housing uh, crisis in the United States, and uh, all the investors, uh, not surprisingly, put their money back in their wallets yep. <laughs> because uh, they knew that the recession was on the way, and they wanted to uh, save their cash. So. We, I, I ran it for as long as I could uh, at Zubio um, uh, until my bank accounts and were empty and my credit cards were full. And, uh, and then I uh, threw in the towel. Um, what happened at that point, that was in uh, 2008, in, uh, or 2009, excuse me, in, uh, in uh, November of 2009. And I encouraged one of my employees to keep this space open as a chair massage studio. I knew it could be a success as an owner operating model, and that's what it actually turned into. Um, as Zubio, it always made money from the day that we opened. It just didn't make enough money to pay for opening uh, multiple units. Uh, but it was always successful as, uh, as a, uh, a freestanding uh, uh, owner operating model that didn't have uh, investors to pay back. Uh, so. Adam Deskin, one of my employees of Zubio, uh, a month later reopened uh, this studio, kept all the same fixtures and all the same uh, protocols and, uh, and basically the same business model that we'll be talking about tonight, and, uh, and went ahead and uh, is here almost two years later running a very successful uh, owner-operated retail uh, service. So that's how this space came into being. And, uh, and uh, maybe we can talk a little bit. Well, a little bit later, we'll talk about some of the uh, ins and outs of the uh, of the uh, operation. But uh, maybe we can take a minute and just talk about the uh, physical uh, aspect of the of the studio at this point. This is the area for people waiting. It's not a big area. It doesn't need to be a big area uh, uh, because people don't wait very long. Uh, yep. They make appointments uh, ahead of time, uh, a lot of them, and then about half the people uh, just walk in. The busiest time being, of course, uh, during the uh, lunch hour. Um, the uh, well, if they are waiting for a while, they're uh, welcome to use the electric uh, foot massage uh, uh, units that uh, that Adam has installed here. We didn't have those at Zubio, but uh, actually, when it was Zubio, this was a retail space. We we sold products. Adam doesn't sell any product right now. He makes all his money just off of chair massage. And, uh, and uh, so this wall used to be filled with products originally. And uh, this guy over here, I don't know if you can see, uh, we call him, this is the Zubio uh, 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 jumping man. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the idea was that this is how you're supposed to feel after getting a chair massage, uh, just like that. And, uh, and sure enough, most people do. It's great. Uh, let's see. So let's, uh, you want to see the uh, front desk here? Yeah, I'd love to. So there's a water uh, fountain there, um, uh, and uh, the front desk is all the fixtures here were um, uh, custom built. The front desk probably cost, I think it was around seven or $8,000. Wow. Uh, we'll look behind it later. It's a very, very handsome piece. And, uh, and you can see the matching partitions over on the side here. Um, uh, these partitions are what divide the space up, and, and here you are, you know, sitting in the, uh, looking at it from the point of view of the waiting area, and there's there's four stations, and, uh, and as you can see, there's a lot of privacy. Uh, uh, the only one where you can actually see somebody being massaged is the one in this corner here, but there's one behind the, uh, next to the window, uh, uh, and, uh, and that's totally uh, uh, enclosed. Uh, there's one behind this partition here, which is not lit, and uh, Adam's only using three chairs at the moment. So this is the smallest space, and he's not using this one. Um, uh, there's one behind this partition here, um, uh, where you might be able to see the practitioner uh, back leg coming out, but you really can't easily see the, uh, the person who's inside. And then, of course, there's one in the corner. All these partitions are removable. Uh, they all lift up and they can be set against the wall because one of the things that happens in this space is events. Um, uh, now, Adam hasn't been doing any yet, uh, but at some point he may begin doing that. But when we had in Zubio, we would have events uh, here, uh, parties, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, 
the front desk makes a, a wonderful place for putting drinks while you're having parties. Yeah. Uh, soft drinks, of course. Uh, but uh, people would rent out the space and use it for uh, uh, parties that would include chair massage. They would use it for meetings. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you can even project uh, on the wall back here if you're showing slides or using uh, PowerPoint presentations, things like that. Um, uh, so with this uh, partition taken away, uh, with all the partitions taken away, it actually opens up the space very, very, very nicely. And, and a lot of times what would happen is we'd keep the one chair up in the front just for events for people uh, to get massage one at a time uh, while they're engaging in whatever, whatever the activity was or the event there. Okay. So it's a nice way to add a little extra income to the space because, of course, you are limited to retail hours. This space is located in a, um, uh, uh, a mall, and, and it's a semi-enclosed mall in the financial district in San Francisco called Crocker Galleria. It's on the first level, and, uh, uh, and, and it closes up at night, so it's closed right now. Uh, but the, uh, they lock the gates uh, generally somewhere around 7 o'clock, so they just kind of locked up. And it's also closed on Sundays totally. Uh, on Saturdays, it's open for a limited hour. So actually, uh, uh, Adam keeps it open from uh, 10 in the morning till uh, 6 at night. The last appointment is taken at 6, so he could be, or one of, one of his, uh, the people working for him, could be working until, uh, until uh, as late as 6.30 or 6.40, 6.40 uh, in the evening if they get a 6 o'clock appointment. Um, uh, but because there are limited retail hours, the key in, in retail space is utilizing it. Uh, uh, maximizing the income that comes from each square foot. So the more you can use it, you know, on, on uh, in the evening times or on weekends, the better it is. Uh, but Anarchy does keep it open on Saturdays, but it's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty slow down here on Saturdays. The main shopping area is uh, just uh, west of here, Union Square, is about uh, three blocks west of here, and uh, that's where most of the folks go. And this is not street side; it's off the street, so people have to come into this mall area. Um, uh, it's pretty busy during the week, but on weekends it pretty pretty well dies out like that. Okay. You want to see one of the uh, stations up close? Yeah, and did somebody ask a quick question? Um, sure. Who's who's your target target market, and how are they different from Massage MV clientele? Well, Massage MV, as you may know, is a uh, suburban phenomenon. Um, they've not gone into the inner cities, um, uh, mostly because the, it's too expensive for square footage. Now that may change because, uh, quite frankly, square footage is uh, is a lot cheaper now in uh, in, uh, in downtown areas, uh, in urban areas than in the, the than it has been in the past. Uh, so I don't I don't know what their business plan is, but uh, they've limited themselves to outer urban areas um, and not gone into center cities. This particular business model is a center city model. Uh, but there are I believe it's something like 30,000 people within a two block radius of where I'm standing right now. And that's the target market. So we do. Uh, Adam does very little uh, marketing, uh, except to uh, people who are, in, in fact, located uh, in the area. There's no point in him doing, for example, advertising in newspapers um, or broadsheets that get uh, get uh, sent all around to. Uh, uh, you know, that's 20th century marketing. He doesn't do any of that. Uh, he does experiments a little bit with. Uh, uh, he's experimented with Yelp. But uh, and, and, and every day today there were a couple of people who came in here who, who searched for us uh, for the Breakpoint. His his uh, location, by the way, is called Breakpoint. So I'm going to be using uh, the name of his uh, company now from now on. So if you go uh, BreakpointMassage.com, you'll go to his website, um, uh, and uh, and people find it through doing uh, Google searches. He's experimented a little bit with Google Ads, you know, targeting Google Ads. Um, uh, and he's experimented a little bit with uh, coupons, uh, as uh, you know, coupons are fairly controversial uh, yeah. in the massage industry, and uh, he hasn't had a whole lot of success. There are certain ways that you can use coupons um, uh, that can be uh, very useful um, uh, for massage. Basically, uh, one of the one of the best ways to use them is for gift certificates, uh, because uh, again, and in retailing, mostly. Uh, Depending on, depending on your target audience, most of the certificates don't get um, uh, cashed in. So if half of them don't get cashed in, and you're offering you know a 40% you know, off 
for gift certificates or 20% or 30% off on gift certificates, then you're still making money. Um, uh, but uh, there's been a real problem with, uh, with using uh, folks like Group, Groupon for uh, services. Uh, the business model they're using or they're trying to sell is where you can get um, uh, uh, more ongoing customers. You get them in your door the first time, and then they'll come back again. And what it turns out that happens in a lot of massage businesses is that you get people one time, and that's all. Um, and they get a discount mas massage, and that may be okay for a private practice because you don't have a lot of overhead. Uh, but for a, a retail space like this, where you're paying practitioners you know, to do the work, um, uh, then it does become a problem. Okay, well, let's take a look at uh, one of the uh, stations, this one in the corner here. Okay. So here we've got the uh, massage chair. On this side is a uh, custom-built cabinet. Um, every each of the stations has a, a triangular cabinet um, uh, with the doors on it. On the top of the cabinet are the, the um, always present clock with the large numbers on it. So <laughs> watch your time. Uh, very, very important in a retail setting. Um, uh, uh, the customer is watching the time. You have to be watching the time. You may have somebody coming up right behind you. Um, uh, uh, today was a busy day, so there was a lot of people in, and, uh, and it's very important. Time is very important. Uh, and all the clocks are well synchronized. Uh, Adam does that every week. Uh, your tissue, little uh, greenery. This is an important piece that uh, often gets overlooked in, uh, in some uh, uh, retail settings. Um, uh, you know, the idea, of course, is, to, is for the customer to be warm and, and they cool off, obviously, as they're getting massage. So as they're cooling off, you may be warming up, the practitioner may be warming up. And most of the time, the heating the, and, and air conditioning here works pretty good, but sometimes it's a little off. And so having a small targeted uh, fan, it can be very helpful. Uh, and then in the cabinet, we keep uh, the uh, three uh, major supplies, the face cradle covers. Okay, disposable face cradle covers. Um, uh, the always present hair ties. Oh, so yep, definitely. <laughs> get people's uh, long hair off their necks so you're not uh, pulling on the hair. And then, of course, the uh, handy wipes, the sanitary wipes uh, for there. And there's no, uh, there's no uh, uh, garbage uh, trash receptacle in here except uh, the bottom shelf, and that's where all the trash goes um, afterwards. And then, and then one one quick question. Um, somebody asked, can clients book appointments online or by phone, or is it all walk-ins? You know, I'm, I'm gonna. Can you hold that one? Yeah. Okay. The front desk. Let's talk a little bit about the scheduling. Okay. Here. Perfect. Pull up. Yeah. So um, uh, here's a hook in every uh, station. There's a uh, speaker in every station that uh, points right down to the chair. Uh, there's actually uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, speakers total in this uh, 500 square feet. And then uh, after the massage, uh, you want some way, this wasn't originally in the design, but we realized we'd forgotten to put uh, 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 mirrors in, uh, into the uh, station. So we used one of these cutouts and every, uh, every partition, at least on one side, has a uh, mirror in it so people can uh, adjust their hair and makeup and whatever after the massage like that. Um, uh, let's, uh, on out here, and uh, let's take a quick peek. Uh, as long as we're uh, going around, let's take a quick peek at the uh, in the break room, and uh, you can see where the uh, the uh, chair massage specialists hang out. Of course, it's uh, messy, like most break rooms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but on this side, over here. We've got the, uh, this is behind the front desk, is a cutout, a triangular cutout. So that's just all storage over there. It's where the sound system is uh, taken care of and uh, some of the supplies, um, uh, scheduling, the place for the uh, uh, specialists to put their materials, more storage, sitting place, electricity, more storage, and there's a set of uh, coat hangers behind here and uh, the major uh, trash receptacle is also back here. And of course, uh, um, uh, just like in the uh, each studio station, uh, where there's got to be a, uh, uh, a uh, mirror here for the practitioners to check themselves out too. Okay. And uh, let's come on out to the uh, front desk. Let's go behind the front desk and we'll deal with some of these uh, technical questions about how to uh, uh, run a chair massage studio. 
So, in terms of scheduling, uh, what we we're asking about, this is a this is a tricky one. Now, when it was Zubio, uh, in the original model, we had a uh, very expensive online scheduling system that had three components. One was the one that the web-based component that the the customers would see on their computers at their desktop. The second was the administrative component, which was behind the desk that um, we used to have uh, two sta stations here, actually, when it was Zubio, we were a little bit busier. And the third component was a touch screen that sat on the counter up here so that people walking in could sign themselves up for an appointment. Uh, they didn't have to uh, 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 they didn't have to talk to anybody. As a matter of fact, it was a self-service model, so you didn't actually need anybody uh, behind the front desk to uh, make appointments. They could make them up there. Uh, when the checkout happened, the checkout always happened with the uh, behind the front desk with the administrative screen. Now, Adam doesn't have a online scheduling component, and the main reason is is the problem that I just talk about of not being able to have a touch screen, not being able to have a self-service um, uh, component for for the uh, uh, customers who are walking in when all the practitioners, the specialists, are doing chair massage. So uh, for example, uh, uh, when, I, when I walked in here at, at noon time, uh, Adam was here with one of the specialists. Both of them were working. And so what he has instead for walk-ins is just a, uh, a sign-up sheet that he keeps on the counter up here, and uh, and it basically just uh, gives a little bit of information. Um, uh, it says that uh, how, how to fill it out. It's, it's bare minimum information, but um, there are two chairs. Um, if there's a third chair, it means that generally um, uh, that he has two practitioners here plus himself who would be working, and he doesn't keep the third chair on the schedule just simply because it's too confusing yep. for people walking in. He wants to keep it as simple as possible. Now, the problem is, with the sign-up, is that he offers, I don't know if you can see the, uh, you see the sign back here um, uh, for the uh, offerings that he has? Yep. Okay, so he's got the 10 minute, the 20 minute, and the 30 minute. So it's divided into increments of 10 minutes at a time. When you do a 10 minute massage, you your actual appointment slot is going to be 15 minutes long, not 10 minutes long, okay? Because you need five minutes for getting people into the chair and screening and out of the chair afterwards and cleaning up the chair in between um, uh, customers. So it's actually a 15 minute slot. Now, these on this, this schedule, he has every increment is 15 minutes long. And his instructions are, if you uh, sign up by yourself for 10 minutes, just fill out one line. If you sign up for 20 minutes, fill out two lines. If you sign up for 30 minutes, fill out three lines. Well, you can see if you sign up for 30 minutes, you're taking three 15-minute slots or a total of 45 minutes. That's not totally efficient yeah. <laughs> because you actually only need five minutes in between. Um, uh, while online scheduling systems will allow you to create a five-minute buffer, I've looked and I haven't found an online scheduling system that has a self-service component, and specifically a touchscreen one, you know, that's easy to use. Um, uh, so that's something that's missing. Uh, what happened, you may be asking, to the one that Zubio created? Well, um, uh, it was branded for Zubio, and although it's still available, um, uh, nobody has, uh, has expressed an interest in uh, spending the money that it would take to make it into a generic product. It's still a very good product, but it still needs some work. So if there's anybody out there uh, uh, with some uh, good uh, high-level uh, computer skills, because it's a, it was a very expensive, very high-level program, um, uh, and uh, wants to uh, make it into a, a, a generic product, um, I'd be happy to, to talk with you. Uh, send me an email or give me a call. Yeah. Uh, but I'd love to see it. It's a unique system. It is an optimized system, which is to say that it tends, it also was set, uh, the algorithms were set to show people appointments that butted up against other appointments so that there was the minimum amount of wasted time um, uh, in the studio. And uh, so this manual system, uh, the first thing I'll say about it is it works. Okay, so he takes telephone appointments, he takes walk-in appointments, he takes um, uh, email appointments, 
but it doesn't take online appointments. And the, and uh, and but even as low tech as it is, it still works. And he still keeps a pretty full schedule and uh, keeps a couple of people busy all day long. Um, uh, and <coughs> excuse me, getting over a little bit of a yeah. chest cold. Um, uh, so that's that's the structure of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the scheduling system. Um, uh, what was the other? Was there another question about uh, that that we had before? Uh, let me see. Just uh, can clients book appointments online or by phone, or is it all walk-ins or both? So yeah. yep, you got to. And then um, so, then so, one one quick thing. Um, somebody says hi, Uncle David. It's Emily watching from Boston. <laughs> 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 I think the secret's out. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hope you're doing well. She's uh, she's uh, uh, doing uh, one of one of these people uh, uh, doing some PhD in uh, bioengineering uh, out at uh, Boston University, and uh, uh, and I'll say hi to her and uh, Matt, um, or her uh, main squeeze out there too. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, what else do we want to talk about here? So, credit cards, take credit cards. Um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, gift cards. So he's got a gift card system here. And basically you can buy it for any value and uh, he'll just put the value on and then as it's used up, he'll uh, change the amount that's on the back of the gift card. So it's a fairly simple, he decided early on um, to make a very simple pricing system and very simple uh, uh, discount systems. He's been experimenting with it slowly over the past couple of years, uh, but he went with the Zubio model, which was to divide the massages into 10 minute increments. Um, part of the reason for that is, is so that you can keep the, the lowest price possible for somebody who just wants to try it out. Now, in our approach to chair massage, we do, in the touch board approach, we do as, as small an increment as five minutes at events. But in the retail setting, ten div dividing by ten is a real easy way for people to understand how much they're paying for massage. When it was Zubio, originally, we were charging $1.50 per minute for massage. So it was $15 for ten minutes. Um, uh, Thirty dollars for 15, uh, 20 minutes, and for um, uh, thirty minutes it was forty-five dollars. So it's a very easy, easy configuration. But we did a lot of discounting at Zubio. We did a lot of emailing. We did a lot of uh, 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 discount uh, uh, coupons and whatnot through the email. Adam started out. He wanted to start with a lower price, and uh, so he started out at a dollar thirty a minute. <coughs> So it's thirteen dollars for ten minutes, twenty-six dollars for um, uh, twenty minutes, and thirty-nine dollars for thirty minutes. What he's added when we had Zubio, we also had besides the the uh, upper body chair massage, we also had the lower body, what we call foot massage, but it's actually lower leg foot massage. It went from the knee to the toes, and we had ten and twenty minute increments of that. So at Zubio, somebody could get up to fifty minutes of massage in a session a 30 minute upper body and a 20 minute lower body massage. Now, um, uh, Adam didn't start with the uh, foot contest, the lower leg foot contest uh, uh, sequences, but he's, he's talking about adding those uh, at some point in the future. However, what he has added is these 10 minute, what he calls 10 minute add-ons. And I'll be talking a little bit, uh, when I'm doing the demo, a little bit about the structure of the massage, but he offers an add-on for the uh, uh, shoulder neck sequence, an add-on for the shoulder lower back sequence, and an add-on for the shoulder arm sequence. And again, those are 10 minutes and $13 each, and you just add on $13 onto your 10-minute upper body, 20-minute upper body, or 30-minute upper body, like that. Okay. And then um, um, Candy and Russ in New York said you're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. and then um, Somebody says, I'm interested in talking to you more about using Zubio scheduling in a couple grocery stores. He'll be contacting you soon. So. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Great. All right. Um, uh, should we, uh, how about a demo? 
Uh, yeah, we got plenty of time. So let's yep. do uh, a demo of the uh, of the sequence, and I'll talk while I'm doing the demo, um, uh, and uh, and describe uh, some of the uh, uh, kind of interesting uh, pieces of the touch pro approach. Uh, one of the things I wanted to uh, just show for people who don't do chair massage, uh, I'll just show you the hygiene protocol that we've developed uh, for chair massage, the touch pro version. Um, uh, two handy wipes so that you keep your hands off the chair while you're sanitizing the chair. Um, always sanitize the face cradle between customers. Always sanitize the armrest between customers. And uh, then when I first come in during the, the day when practitioners start out, uh, we like to sanitize all of the rest of the parts of the chair. If somebody has, uh, um, between customers, if somebody has had shorts or a skirt on, in any place that bare skin touches the vinyl, um, you want to sanitize it, obviously, between customers. Um, uh, this is a good way to do it, with the, the two, two for ones. Uh, there's maybe some parts of the chair, like the handles, that you also want to give a, uh, a quick swipe to, at least uh, at the beginning of the day, like that. And, uh, and then, of course, your own hands. Uh, put together. Then use the face cradle covers, of course, that everybody uses. Uh, this is the Strong Light chair. It's the uh, second one that I helped to develop, and uh, and uh, they just came out. Oh, God, we don't have one here. I forgot to bring it. They just came out with a very cool new face cradle, which was uh, uh, probably the part that uh, I, I kept worrying about the most. In this version of the of the chair. Um, as a matter of fact, not just on this chair, but uh, on uh, there have been very few face cradles that I felt comfortable with. The new one is um, uh, the, this part support underneath is actually angled down. It's called the curve, so it curves down, and it's incredibly comfortable. It's really a, a great addition. Uh, once again, making this, in my humble opinion, the most uh, perfect chair on the market. Um, uh, and uh, so let's do a little bit, let's do a 10 minute version of the uh, touch pro sequence. I'm going to ask Michael, uh, who's been handling the camera for me, to uh, be my model. So uh, hopefully you'll still, if I get out, <clears throat> if it gets difficult to see, just let us know and we can change the camera. But we're going to do for a wide angle um, uh, shot here. Um, I, I won't go through the, uh, the whole screening protocol, but there is a screening protocol that we do, a verbal one. Uh, before people sit in the chair. When we had the uh, online scheduling system, people actually had the touch screen system, people actually had to respond yes or no to questions that appeared on the administrative screen um, at the time that the uh, booking came up. So you'd, you'd already be pre-screened uh, before, uh, in a written form, before you got to the uh, chair. And then the practitioner would just uh, ask you, uh, you know, the basic questions about uh, anything else I need to know about, you know, other than on the screen form. Um, uh, we do that here at uh, Breakpoint. Uh, we do it verbally, um, and, uh, and we do it relatively quickly. And it only has to be done thoroughly for the first time somebody gets a massage. Um, if they're a regular customer, obviously, uh, that it's not a problem. Okay, Michael, I'll uh, share. Let's see if we get this adjusted comfortably for you here. And, Tilt your chin down there. Is that about right there? Okay, great. And, uh, here we go. So let me just tell you a little bit about the touch pro approach to uh, chair massage. It's based on acupressure, uh, uh, Japanese massage specifically, and we do a uh, sequence. Okay, so the touch pro approach is based on consistency. What we try to do in touch pro uh, is add something that's not very well, um, uh, uh, doesn't permeate the massage profession in a big way. It's been one of the big, uh, in my opinion, it's one of the big failings of the massage profession is the lack of uh, something that you see in every other service profession called quality control. And so I, you know, it's always been a, kind of interesting to me that the massage schools encourage people to do their own thing. I'll tell you, my experience going to massage, going to massage school 30 some odd years ago was that I was scared to death to do my own thing <laughs> when I graduated. Yeah. 
Because I knew I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't have the experience. I didn't have the hands-on training and whatnot. And so I was happy that my teacher, the Japanese guy, um, uh, taught me a sequence, an actual sequence that I could follow. Now, in Japanese, we call that a kata. So what our approach to training chair massage is, is to do it very much like you train in the martial arts, like Tai Chi or Karate, um, uh, where the term kata is used to describe a highly choreographed sequence of movements that people do over and over again, practice over and over again, until it becomes automatic. Now, the idea of becoming automatic is so that you can uh, stop paying attention to the kata. The kata can disappear, and you can begin paying attention to what actually I think is the most important part of massage, which is the fact that this is a relationship based on touch. And so I can pay attention to what's going on in my hands and underneath my hands um, while I'm giving the massage, and I don't have to um, worry about what I'm going to be doing next. My body, my muscle memory, knows what to do next. And so it becomes, it allows me to pay attention to the relationship. And at the most basic level of massage, that's actually uh, the what we're, uh, what I think we're supposed to be paying attention to is the uh, relationship that's not based on talk, but the one that's based on touch. So uh, I can mostly talk and do this costume yeah. <laughs> because I didn't do it 10,000 times. But I, I tell you, you know, I know actually a number of contests. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, a five-minute one, a ten-minute one, a fifteen-minute one, uh, which is the one that I teach in uh, classes because it's fifteen minutes is pretty easily downsized to ten or five, and pretty easily upgraded to twenty. So that's why I teach a fifteen-minute sequence. Um, and in the fifteen-minute sequence, is not while it's not done here, it's not unusual that it be done in events because again, in the events or the workplace market. When, when you say that you're doing a 15-minute massage, well, if you're really doing a 15-minute massage, you need 20 minutes uh, uh, to do it. You need time, again, to uh, change and, and uh, do your hygiene protocol and get the last person out of the chair and the next person into the chair. So uh, it's one of the things that I'm very cautious about uh, uh, is giving people an honest 10-minute uh, uh, massage, an honest 20-minute <laughs> massage, or an honest 15 minute massage, as the case may be. Um, uh, so we pay a lot of attention to uh, um, uh, openness in our relationship to the customer, uh, not having anything to hide, uh, uh, not trying to hide behind focus, focus um, uh, uh, in terms of what it is that we're trying to do. Functionally, we don't pretend to be massage therapists. This is not massage therapy. Uh, chair massage is ideally suited for relaxation and circulation massage. And what we tell people is uh, circulation is not optional. Uh, if you don't have it, you'll be dead. So uh, massage in general, basic massage in general, and chair massage in particular, is excellent for enhancing circulation, uh, uh, particularly for people who are sitting at their desks um, uh, all day long and uh, with their shoulders, arms, and hands and in static positions um, when, they, when the body is designed to move. So circulation comes from the body moving, moving from muscles pumping. And there's two types of circulation. Um, uh, the coin of circulation has two sides to it. One side is active circulation, active movement rather, which creates circulation through exercise. And the, others, the other side of the coin is passive movement. And here you create circulation through massage. Um, that's what we're doing. Okay? So the active, active movement, while it doesn't have any particularly aerobic effect, um, uh, uh, our active movement has the aerobic effect. The passive movement doesn't have the aerobic effect, but still it uh, provides um, good circulation uh, to the body. Now, because this is based on traditional Chinese medicine on uh, acupressure points, the circulation that we're talking about we, we never necessarily describe this to the customers, 
but we mean it in a very broad sense of the word. So in Chinese medicine, any sensation is circulation, uh, moving, anything, whether it be uh, 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 blood circulating or uh, uh, lymph circulation or uh, 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 nerves uh, circulation, ner uh, electrical energy circulating, or emotion circulating, or mental activity circulating. All of it is affected uh, from a Chinese medicine point of view by this massage. So we've got a kind of a big idea about it. But the small idea that everybody seems to understand pretty easily is the concept, the general word circulation. And so that's the one that we use in terms of describing the functional benefits in the simplest possible way, uh, far possible functional benefits of chair massage is that it enhances circulation so that the body's own self-healing mechanisms have a chance to work. And that's what we're about, is uh, assisting uh, being a resource for people's uh, own uh, self-healing mechanisms. The body does a very good job of healing itself if you give it a chance. Okay, so here's my back to you for a short moment. Yep. <laughs> I love the neck, I apologize. Yep. Uh, I love the back of your shirt, though. Yeah, my cameraman's preoccupied. Oh, yeah, hey, I forgot that. I'm advertising, all right. Yep, yep. <laughs> awesome. Okay, now, this is the other side. So I don't know if you guys are timing me or not. Nope. <laughs> and then um, Tom Derelick, I think it's pronounced, I'm from Austin, Texas, said... I've been, yeah, and he said he's been practicing your kata for over 20 years. The customers love it, and he gets a lot of um, praise. Yes, yeah. Yeah, well, it's amazing. You know, people worry about, uh, don't, don't they get tired of it? Doesn't the practitioner get tired of it? Doesn't the, don't the customers get tired of it? And the answer is basically no, <laughs> because it works. It really works. Um, uh, I'm going to sit you up here, Michael, and do a little neck stretch this side and the other side. Percussion on the head. And a little just a closing sequence. A couple of extra things here. I'm going to do a couple of stretches for the shoulders. And lock your fingers behind your head here. My niece in Boston is uh, probably dying at the moment. Um, uh, <laughs> she, <laughs> the last time I was out there, I missed seeing her. She didn't, uh, she didn't get her chair massaged. Thanksgiving! Yeah. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Phyllis in the chat says, ah, oh, the cameraman will be useless now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if he can uh, speak to us about his experience. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. That's a 10 minute version of Kata. Um, obviously, the 20 minute, 30 minute, just get uh, in the brain a couple of skills here, is more and. Uh, It's breaking up. David, your your Skype is breaking up. David? He's going to Skype right back then, okay?
Just one moment, there's just a technical difficulty, and he'll be right back, okay? Yep, and just, okay, I need you to see your cam. Okay, um, uh, it just went blank, but um, uh, I can't, I don't know why. Let's see. I can't see you either. Nope, you won't be able to see me. And, oh, there we go, sorry. Okay, perfect. All right, sorry about that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> see what happens to the cameraman when he gets a massage? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, somebody in the chat just asked, are there any tips um, for this person? Um, they're a student at Everest University, and they're doing a chair event tomorrow night, and they're very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, easy. I got a lot of tips. Yeah. The first one is, um, uh, don't worry, most people are happy with any kind of touch. Okay? Uh, so that's the first thing to understand. We live in such a touch-starved culture that as long as you're not hurting people, um, uh, it's going to be good, and, and I encourage you to uh, just take a deep breath and just to go for it. Um, the other advantage of the kata, I have to say, is that uh, because we've been doing these katas for, as Michael said, over 25 years, um, we know how to do them efficiently. Uh, we know what works and what doesn't work. We know how it, how it, how it can be adjusted for tall people, short people, wide people, skinny people, uh, people with uh, who can't bend their knees, uh, uh, people you know with one arm, whatever. You know, we, we've seen everything, and we've also managed to make the kata um, adjustable for specialist practitioners who are wide or, or, or narrow, tall or short. Um, so it's it has great advantage in in that you can. When you're doing a kata, you can actually study it much more deeply. If you're doing something different every time, um, uh, it's very difficult to, to, to be on the path of mastery uh, for that, that particular approach. Like I say, we teach it like a martial art. There's never any bottom. We give you, um, uh, when, when I train people in chair massage, I give you the whole sequence, you know, the whole onion, you say, and then you spend the rest of your life trying to peel away the layers of the onion. I haven't gotten to the center of, of this onion yet, uh, but I'm still, you know, that Japanese massage. I, I learned from my teacher who studied in Japan, of course, and, uh, and uh, at a school in Kensai, uh, which is about 100 years old. Um, that came from a tradition of Japanese massage that's 13, 1400 years old. That came from a tradition of Chinese medicine, which is four to 5,000 years old. <laughs> There's no way that I'm going to understand what I'm doing uh, uh, in my lifetime. But at least I know what to do, and that's a huge advantage knowing what to do. So I I encourage you to uh, create your own contents, you know, and uh, and keep refining them as uh, as you do customer by customer, and what what works for you, and stick with it, and don't worry that it has to be uh, that you have to be fixing people's you know shoulder problems or neck problems or leg problems uh, every time they uh, they sit in your chair. They don't have that expectation. And you shouldn't have that expectation as well. Okay. And then, um, um, let me see, Sabi, I think it's pronounced, uh, from Nairobi, um, says hello. Oh, great. Yep. 
Yep, and then um, somebody said, did you design the kata forms as much uh, for the body mechanics as well as the customers? How are your wrists after doing this for years? Yeah, so so the, the, the kata is, because it's acupressure, it's, it's very little of it is about strength. It's mostly about leverage. So I didn't talk too much about the, uh, the underlying structure of uh, uh, body mechanics structure, ergonomic structure of the kata, but you may have noticed that Every time I was pressing on him, I was always at a right angle um, uh, and with my body weight behind that, that pressure, whether it would be with my thumbs, uh, uh, with the heels of my hand, with my forearm, with my elbow. It was always at a right angle on the surface that I was pressing on. We spend an inordinate amount of time um, on body mechanics, and that is the hardest, one of the hardest things to learn at the beginning because people want to use their strength. They're taught to use their strength. And for us, it's so much easier than that. It's not about strength at all. It's about using your leverage, about using your weight and leveraging your weight in the body. In my opinion, it's far easier to do than, uh, than table massage. And good body mechanics, I'm glad to mention that because it really um, uh, brings up uh, the longevity question of a career. Without good body mechanics, you won't have a long career. And, uh, and I can't tell you the number of massage schools I've been in across the country and around the world and seeing students with braces on their uh, on their wrists and, and arms and elbows and, and whatnot. And boy, if there isn't something wrong with that picture, I don't know what's wrong with <laughs> if, if you can't learn good body mechanics in a massage school, you need to find another massage school. Uh, but I'm very conservative on this issue, and uh, we like people to have long careers. Uh, Russ, uh, who uh, uh, phoned in, and, uh, and uh, uh, Tom down in, uh, in, in uh, Texas, you know, are, have each done it for more than 20 years and are still going strong, still going strong. And um, is this considered a franchise then, too, or? Well, right now, no. I mean, the the, uh, the, the model that we created now is an owner-operated model, and I'm happy to uh, help people develop their own owner-operated models. Um, uh, I'm trying to uh, convince a couple of other practitioners in San Francisco to open uh, uh, studios, uh, similar studios, uh, of using this model. And, uh, and I'm happy to discuss that with anybody across the, uh, across the country. And I'll be talking more about that on my uh, blog, uh, blog.touchpo.com. Just uh, go there and sign up for the email. Uh, sign your email address there, and you'll get our regular newsletters. Uh, there's already, already a bunch of blog postings up there, but I've got, I've got dozens more that are, are waiting to go up. Um, uh, all it takes is time. <laughs> and, and then somebody said, are you going to be teaching any workshops soon? Um, this person's in Spokane. Okay, I'm watching you. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't have any scheduled up there. We used to teach, uh, I'll tell you honestly, uh, you know, uh, in the 80s and 90s, uh, we were teaching up to 75 workshops a year uh, at massage schools around the country. And then we worked ourselves out of a job. Uh, we got, we trained so many people. We've trained to date over 11,000 people, I think there's 12,000 people um, uh, in the, the TouchPro approach, uh, through TouchPro. And, uh, and, and, uh, what happened was that the massage schools stopped flying us in and uh, flying our trainers in from around the country uh, to teach their school and just hire people locally. So we basically trained enough people to work ourselves out of a job. So we don't do that much training around. We'll go, if there's 12 people anywhere in the country um, uh, who want a, a weekend training, we'll be happy to come and uh, send a trainer out and to train up those uh, minimum of 12 people. Um, we've got a couple of workshops on the schedule. I'm not traveling that much. I, I teach three seminars in San Francisco every year. I just finished one. Uh, there'll be another one coming up in January. Uh, there's one coming up on the East Coast, uh, also in January, I believe, in, uh, in uh, uh, Baltimore, the School of Baltimore. You can keep track, again, uh, by signing up for the newsletter. It's also posted on, uh, on our uh, website as well, or the uh, right hand column of the website. So how do you feel after the massage, then? Oh, I feel great. Yeah. <laughs> Getting the massage as well, especially from David. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tremendously relaxing. It's energizing. Uh, it, it's amazing how much ground you can cover, even in a 10-minute sequence. Uh, you're working the upper and lower back, shoulders, arms, back of the neck. Uh, of course, in the 20 and 30-minute sequence, there's an additional technique uh, that you know, works those areas even more fully. And how many hours would you say you um, actually massage a day then? Well, a good day is, uh, we kind of measure our, our day by minute, so a good day is, uh, say, 240 minutes, which is going to be about four hours of straight massage. Yeah, four yeah hours. so four hours of straight massage. 
Uh, you know, that would be uh, a pretty, you know, four hour table massages would be a good day. So I figure it's kind of equivalent. Uh, obviously you see more people when you're doing chair massage than you do table massage. So I did um, uh, a shift today. I do one shift a week here um, from about 12 to 3 on uh, Wednesdays generally. So uh, so if you want to get a massage from me, uh, come to San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so now my employee is, uh, uh, allows me to come in. Uh, my former employee, Adam, allows me to come into his shop and because uh, I believe that I need to keep doing chair massage every week. Uh, and so this is one sure way that I never miss a week of, uh, of doing chair massage. Uh, I went pretty nonstop uh, for that three-hour period today. I think I did um, what you say? about 130 minutes worth of massage. Um, so there were like uh, two 30-minute massages, 20-minute massage, 10-minute massage, and that. Um, uh, I, in terms of the payment, nobody's asked about that yet, but in terms of what the practitioner gets paid, um, uh, I think uh, I, I made about $91 uh, for those minutes and plus, uh, what did I say in terms of, about $30 in tips uh, today. It was $40 in tips today. Tips, yeah. um, uh, so I was making better than $30 an hour. If I make, if somebody gets $30 an hour working here, um, uh, uh, you know, for their shifts, we're happy. We're, we're thinking that that's, that's a, a good amount of uh, pay, a fair amount of pay for uh, uh, for doing chair massage in somebody else's shop. And then Tom says, um, thank you so much for what you've contributed to the massage industry. Uh, my, my honor, I, you know, to be privileged enough to do work you love, uh, there's nothing like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and we're just getting started. <laughs> We're just getting started. People ask, you know, when are you going to retire? And I say, you know, when when the, the uh, box top closes on top of my body. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll still try to massage. <laughs> i got no money. I have to keep working. No, I, I love what I do. It's great fun. And uh, we're attempting now, the, the current job is to put as much of our body of knowledge on the internet as we can. And so the website uh, it started, I redid it completely uh, uh, about nine months ago, and I'm iterating it up step by step. It's going to get better and better, and uh, pretty soon we'll be uh, hopefully having some streaming trainings on there as well, some online training uh, as well. Uh, I'm a big believer in using technology. I got my first computer in 1982 uh, when I had my massage school, and I've been broke ever since. Um, uh, uh, but I, I started the days before there was a graphical user interface, you know, before there, there was only a keyboard, no mice, and only lines of text. And uh, so I'm a big believer in technology. Uh, so I try to merge high tech with high touch. And are you going to be at any conferences or anything else coming up? Uh, you know, I've got a couple schedules for next year. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, there's going to be one in, uh, in, actually, you probably know this better than I do, the, there's one in Las Vegas in, I think, May. Yes. Yeah. Or San Diego in May, in uh, July in Las Vegas, something like that. Uh, that'll be uh, also on our website. Uh, I'll keep, keep track of where I'm heading around, and I'll be uh, noting the uh, the places where I'll be teaching. Um, uh, those are two other places. They're not on the website yet, but I'll be adding those to the schedule too. Okay. So, um, so, so your goals for the next few years? What would you say? Well, you know, I'm experimenting with a number of things. Uh, maybe the next time we get together, uh, Brian, we can uh, we can talk about some other exciting stuff that I'm doing. I just taught a, a little mini seminar called Between Hugs and Massage. Um, uh, so I'm very interested <laughs> in this area. You know, I consider massage to be highly structured touch. You know, it's done with intention, with training, um, uh, with uh, practice. So it's very focused, you know, uh, touch. Uh, my interest is, is in touch. It's not specifically a massage, it's in getting people touched, um, uh, because I think that's the, uh, the, uh, one of the pathologies of our, of our time. And, uh, and so, you know, in, in making that happen, in, uh, uh, I'm, I'm exploring this uh, kind of intermediary area called what I call lightly structured touch. So I think, you know, besides getting a massage, which is great, you know, and has been my life for the past 30 years, I think there are other kinds of touch that we can teach people to do to each other that don't cost any money, um, uh, that can also be very valuable. And one form, of course, is uh, is uh, what I call uh, kitchen table massage that you do on your friends and family. So it's basically chair massage done over the kitchen table, you know. Um, and we can teach people to do that that type of work, and, and I'm, I'm aiming toward that. 
but even more likely structured than that. I've got some, uh, some touch techniques that I think are very valuable between couples, uh, that couples can do with each other, between parents and children of, uh, uh, that can do it with each other, that, are, that you can teach in five or 10 minutes that can make a, a big difference in people's lives. There's a whole Japanese technique called tapping touch um, uh, that I've been exploring for the past few years. And uh, maybe the next time we get together, I can uh, do some of those demonstrations too. Oh, definitely. And wh what's the best way for people to get a hold of you again? I get through uh, the website. My uh, website is touchpro.com, touchpro, T-O-U-C-H-P-R-O.com. And my email is just uh, David or D. Palmer, or DP is the shortest one, dp at touchpro.com um, uh, to get a hold of me. Um, uh, you're always, of course, welcome to call. Uh, I, I, the way that people, be, sometimes you have to be patient, um, uh, but uh, uh, if you send me, if you call me twice or send me two emails, believe me, my Catholic guilt, you know, just comes right in after I get the second one, and I'm on top of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, sometimes may get a little lost in the uh, in the shuffle, but um, uh, the second one I, I feel totally guilty about. Okay. <laughs> You gotta turn it to some positive, right? Yep. Still, it's gonna be good for something. Yep. Well, thank you very much, David, and then also the sleepy cameraman. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been a treat. I, I appreciate the, the time and space that you offer, Ryan. You do a great service in the industry. Um, hello to my friends and family yep. all across the country. It's uh, been good sharing time with you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks everybody for tuning in.